بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه Money is one of the most beautiful things on earth Everyone pursues what he thinks that is the cause and the reason for happiness Poets wrote poems praising money. Songwriters wrote a lot of songs regarding money. Allah Azza wa Jal, the creator of the heavens and the earth, said in the Quran, Al-Malu wal-Banoon, Zinatul Hayat al-Dunya, that wealth and children are the adornment of the life of this world. This is how beautiful money is. Unfortunately, to some, Money is a blessing, but to others it's a burden. It is something that causes misery in their lives. And the reason is their intention. Some look at wealth, money that they work for as means to take them places. Others regard money as an objective by itself and that is why it causes some to be satisfied while causing others to be depressed money is like a weapon it can be used in good when you defend your livelihood when you defend your life when you defend your honor or when you defend your religion. But it can be also used in things that bring harm to people. It can cause bloodshed, and it also can cause fatalities and the loss of life. Money is just like a ride that can take you places. A wise person rides wealth and money a person who is not so wise has the wealth and money riding him so it depends how you look at it and it depends how you use it a righteous person would use his wealth for the goodness of mankind would use his wealth for things that bring benefit to him to his family and to his community while someone who is sinful who is not as righteous would utilize his wealth and his money for the sake of the corruption of the society and the community he is in he uses it to pursue his lusts and desires and it would take him only to places that do not bring benefit back to him and that is why if you analyze people if you look at individuals around you you will find that some of them live a happy life while others don't have this fortune and favor and the reason is subhanallah it is how they look at money it is how they have this conviction about wealth and about getting rich. Islam does not fight the intention of getting rich. Islam does not hinder you from getting rich. Islam does not tell you not to get rich. However, look at those around you. You will find those who are content with what Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon them, which Allah Azza wa Jal has given them, you find them the happiest people walking on earth. While those who have money, those who are rich, and in some cases those who are filthy rich, if they do not have this content in them, they would be the most miserable people 
on earth. And that is why you find a lot of the rich ones. You find a lot of those who are, in our eyes, fortunate to be rich and wealthy. You find them committing suicide. You find them abusing drugs and consuming intoxicants. They just want to forget. Why? Because they lead a miserable life. Why? Is it because of the money and the wealth? No. It is because of the content they lack. And that is why they're so envious when they see poor people, peasants, someone with a very low income. They feel envious when they see them having a meal and they're happy having it. When they see them go to bed and sleeping without any worries. Don't they want money? Definitely they do. Then how come they go to bed at the end of the day and sleep without any problems? Because of the content they have in themselves. The Prophet of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, gave us a rule of thumb that if we apply it in our lives, we would be the happiest people on earth. And that is, he tells us that whenever you look at someone who Allah Azza wa Jal made superior to you in terms of wealth, money, or provisions, do not look at those who are on top of you, look at those who are below you. The reason? So that you would have this gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal that He has favored you and blessed you. While when it comes to righteousness, when it comes to forms of worship and good deeds, do not look at those below you, look at those who are ahead on, or on top of you so that you would try to strive your level best to reach where they had reached. If you look at this rule of thumb, if I have a car and I'm not content, I would always look at those who have a better car, a faster car, or a more expensive one. And if I have the most expensive car, I would not be content. I would look at those who have a private jet. In a, even if I have a private jet, I would not be content because there are wealthy people who can afford to go to the space. They can afford to go to outer space in their spacecrafts or shuttles or whatever. A proper person who's content with what Allah has given him. If he has a car, he's grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. He looks at those under him and say, Alhamdulillah, Allah favored me with a car of year so and so. Others have much older cars. And if he has the oldest car on earth that breaks down and sometimes it doesn't, he is grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal because he looks at those who don't have cars and travel on bikes. And if he is a person who has a bike. He has a bicycle and he goes to work and he comes on his bike under the heat of the sun, under the rain. He's grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal because he knows there are people who don't have bikes, who only walk. And if he doesn't have a bike and he walks, he's grateful to Allah because there are people who are handicapped. Amputees, maybe does not have a leg or he does not have both legs. And even if he was himself on a wheelchair, he's grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal that he has the ability to move from somewhere to the other because there are people who are paralyzed neck down. And even if you were paralyzed neck down, you're always grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal that he has given you a thankful heart, a heart that remembers him and is grateful to him. You show the gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal because he gave you a tongue that remembers him. So those who are content are always having the best time of their lives. Even if they were 
the poorest on earth and look at poor countries where you find the Muslims consisting or forming the majority, you'll always find them content. Whenever you go to someone who does not even have something to eat and asks, if you ask him, how are you? The first thing that comes into his mind is, praise be to Allah Azza wa Alhamdulillah. And what are you grateful for? He will tell you, you're blind and you cannot see the favors of Allah upon me. And that is why it is not our target in life to gather money or to be wealthy. Is it something bad? No, on the contrary. What's bad is how you look at money, how you treat this wealth. Man by nature is greedy and he likes and loves to possess things. This is the nature of men. You find children, toddlers, infants, they fight over a toy because it's in them. They want to have and take. Our Prophet tells us, alayhi salatu wasalam, peace be upon him, that if the son of Adam was given a valley of gold, imagine having a, a whole valley of gold for yourself. Wouldn't that be enough? The Prophet says no. He would acquire a second one. And if he had two valleys of gold, he would look and pursue a third one. And nothing fills the stomach of the son of Adam, the mouth of son of Adam, the eyes of the son of Adam, except dust. You will keep on pursuing this wealth and this money until you die. Look around you. And you'll find that there are nations that abhors and hates wealth and money. And that is why they have monks. That is why they have people who live and die in their temples. Not owing or not owning a single penny. And on the contrary, you find nations that adore and worship wealth and money. And they live for it. And they die for it. Islam is the middle path. It does not tell you not to work. And it does not tell you work until you die. It tells you try to get as much money as possible. Try to become wealthy. Providing that you don't earn from forbidden means and sources. You don't extort. You don't bribe. You don't steal. You don't embezzle. Islam tells you if your sources of income are permissible and halal, go ahead. Providing it does not make you postpone or delay or neglect forms of worship. Go ahead. Gain as much money as you want. Providing you are giving the zakat, which is the poor due, which is the percentage that you take from your money not give to the rulers or to the priests. You personally give to the poor in your community. Gain money. Get rich. Providing that the money is in your hands and not in your heart. Because if it's in your hands, you have no problem in spending it. If it's in your heart, it's going to toxicate you. And hence, it's going to kill you. Fame and glory. It is something that each and every one of us look up for. Everyone wants to be famous. Even children at school. When you ask them about what they want in life, one would say, I would like to be like the famous footballer so-and-so. Or like the famous actor so-and-so or like the famous ruler, or prince, or president. Everyone wants to be famous. But, is fame something positive or negative? There are prophets and messengers of Allah. They are the most famous among people. There are reformers who are famous. 
And also there are inventors and scientists that are famous. Yet on the other hand, there are people who are known, but not necessarily famous. They are infamous, such as Hitler, Mussolini, and the late Saddam Hussein. Everyone knows these people. But is it something positive? Everyone knows that Pharaoh was a tyrant and that he died miserably. Everyone knows this, but does this make him famous? Satan, the infamous Satan, is known to all. So what type of fame are you looking for? What are you pursuing in this life? Are you interested only to be known to people, even if they say bad things about you? If yes, then you have to reconsider. It was reported that a nomad, a Bedouin, came on the season of Hajj, the season of pilgrimage, which hundreds of thousands of Muslims go to perform their pilgrimage in the holy shrines. And this man brought with him a quantity of filth and dung, and he wanted to put it on the Kaaba, the most sacred building to the Muslims. The people managed to get hold of him before he did that. And they took him to the judge. And the judge asked him, What's wrong with you? Why did you want to put this filth on this sacred and holy Kaaba? And the man said, I wanted to be remembered by the people, even if they curse me and swear at me. So, this man wanted to do something so horrendous so that people in future years would say that that man did this and that. May Allah curse him. May Allah has his wrath on him. May Allah admit him to hell. It's, it's okay. Such consequences to him were okay as long as he was able to be famous. And this shows the illness for those fame seekers. Why do people dare death? Why do people do crazy things? Why do you think people attempt to do the undoables? Why do they do this? It is fame that they are looking for. Yet, even if you manage to get people to recognize you. Even if you manage to get scores of people to love you and to adore you. All of this would be in vain because there will always be a group of people criticizing you. There will always be this portion of people who anticipate your failure. They wait for you to fall and break your neck. This is why we have those who are envious. This is why we have paparazzis who go after celebrities, who run after them, take their pictures, and they try their level best to publish their scandals and to tarnish their reputation. So how important fame is. I'll give you an example. If you invite your friends to a wedding, your wedding, and you rent and hire this expensive place and get the best of food, and you spend a lot of money, you spend an arm and a leg. When people come and eat, as you see them going out, you will hear criticism. The food wasn't good. It was a little bit salty. It didn't have salt. The air conditioning was awful. It was hot. The service was bad. So those whom you are trying to please, at the end of the day, it backs, backfires at you and they criticize 
what you had done, hoping to be recognized, hoping to be known, hoping to be famous. If you look around you, people are worshipping celebrities nowadays. They're actually worshipping them. But are they worthy of being praised? We see singers dying of overdose. We see actresses marrying more than a, a half a dozen in their lifetimes. We see pop stars known and famous of being child molesters. And we see sex scandals, drug addicts, and pop stars who are in and out of rehabs like tens of times in a year. Are they praiseworthy? People know everything about them because they are the newsmakers. You find everything about them on the telly, magazines, newspapers. There are programs that tax them in every single thing they do and they have a great impact on people, people's tastes, people's fashions, and people's moral conduct. Fame is not an objective that you raise your child to look, to look up for. No one in his sound mind would raise his children to be famous. You have to be famous as such and such. I'd like you to be well known as such and such. Fame is a byproduct. If you have righteous children, if they are good scientists, if they do well for the community, they will be famous. So it is a byproduct of what you know and what you do. If you ask people about messengers, about prophets, they'll give you three or four names and they are ignorant about the rest. If you ask them about the companions of the Prophet wasallam, they have no idea except about one or two, five at most. But if you ask them about a footballer or the biography of an actress, you will hear wonders. As individuals, we have to have someone as a role model to look up for. And our role model, as Allah commanded us in the Quran, is our Prophet We follow every single thing of his actions because he is the cream of the humanity. He was the most courageous, the bravest. He was the most generous. He was the most kind and loving. He was the most, he's, he was the best husband to his wives. He was the best companion to his friends and he was the best in everything. Now, you want to be famous? Love him more than you love yourself. Not only that, you want to be prosperous, you want to be happy, you have to love those whom Allah Azza wa Jal loves. A man came to the Prophet and he was sad and in grief. And he's telling to the Prophet as Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, who was narrating the hadith says, and he asked, O Prophet of Allah, a man loves a group of people, but he's unable to catch up. Meaning that they are so righteous, so pious, so high in paradise, I'm unable to catch up with them. And the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, you will be on the day of judgment with those whom you love. So isn't it time for you to shape up and look to whom you adore and love? Because by Allah, you will be with them on the day of judgment. And your love to them depends on their actions and deeds. So if you love the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, if you love the righteous people, if you love the companions, by Allah you will be with them. But if you love the other side, if you love the dark side of fame, then I'm afraid you will be with them on the day of judgment. Wassalamu alaikum.
ورحمة الله وبركاته